Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. This is game three of week two NA play-ins. Right now, we're going to see five angry men who lost their first game against Fat Chunks Assemble. Going to be facing off against the winners of last game, Late Bloomers. Alongside me, Craig. Hey, Hinderman. And, you know, I can't wait to see what's going to happen in this game. Late Bloomers really lived up to their name. They had some trouble in the early and mid game, but turned it all around with an explosive team fight, an explosive Ao Kuang ultimate. And that brings me back to our first game of the day. Yeah, it really does. I mean, now we're going to see bands coming through straight away. And look at that. Straight off the bat, 5 a.m. go take away Aphrodite. Instantly off the table. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, Fusion isn't really an Aphrodite player. So they don't want to pick it. Yeah, true. And they see that late bloomers played it, and they're just like, no, we're no. not going to let you have Afro. No. It's not worth it. They're also going to get rid of Rom, taking that one away from Fawzen. Osiris banned out against Five Iron Men. Wolfie loves Osiris. He was Makes one of sense. the first players to really bring him out in ranked and competitive play. Loki also banned away. You can't give that to Fusion. Athena first pick. Well, the first pick to Athena yeah. last time as well, if I remember correctly, in the first game of the day. Is that right? Yeah, I think they did. They did, pick for, they did a first pick. Uh, as well. Chunks did. Chunks oh, did. Chunks did. Okay. So you can still see 5am and Chunks are definitely the ones to prioritize Athena still in that. We did see, you know, the, in the last game we saw uh, Torch ban away Athena from that being available. But Late Bloomer is going to go back to true and tested means and going to give Fozzie once again the Artemis, which, to be honest, didn't have a bad game, but has really struggled against Rom in lane. Yeah, but he's not going to have to deal with Ramen lane this That's true. time. And That's true. The question is, is Nanton going to play your standard Apollo for the split push? And You don't really box with Artemis. You just kind of outmaneuver and outmap the Artemis player. Or is he going to go for Ulur, where it's a little bit more of an even matchup, and Ulur can actually win if he plays it well. Nemesis picks Nemesis. up the late bloomers. That Artemis. covers a lot of options. This it's a Nemesis. nice early pick. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of it today. Five angry men. I actually feel this nemesis pick is against Wolfie. They're trying to take it away from Wolfie here sure. with the nemesis pick. However, when you try and take a god away from a player who understands the god, that person also knows the counter picks that do well against it. You know, the gods that can deal with it to an extent. So I don't know if this one will pay off. We'll have to see because it's not, you no, know, nemesis isn't one we see as often. It's starting to seem, you know, more and more as time goes on, but you know, there's still the likes of Thor on the table, still the likes of Mercury available right now. Be interesting to see what they do with it. But Chuck and Ail Kwong picked up for 5 a.m. Yeah, 5 a.m. is just like, all right, we, we don't want to pick in as this game. We've already got a global from Athena, and we oh, don't want too many yeah. of those because let's be honest, while Through Space and Time has its moments in team fights, it's definitely not as strong as Spirits Tempest, and yep. they don't want to let late bloomers have that. They've seen, they've seen enough Spirits Tempest for one day. Geb going to be locked in. For the late bloomers, don't want to let that get banned away here. And the other thing I want to touch on, though, is Chalk is a really, really strong flex pick for Five Iron Men. Fusion can play it in the solo, Wolfie can play it in the jungle, and we're, we'll see if he uh, plans on doing that. Yeah, we'll see some gap being locked in. Ban phase comes out late. Bloomers take away Apollo, and in response, you can see Five Iron take out Jean Kui out of the mix as well. Yeah, Jean Kui taken away because they don't have a way to counter it, so really, really good there. The Apollo means that you're going to see Nanton on something a little bit more interesting, and I love that. I also love this Isis pick here. CV is a strong Isis player, and Isis is a very strong character. It all comes down to the ultimate and how that ends up being used Isis. in team fights. but make no mistake, a good circle of protection can absorb, return, and heal up an incredible amount of damage. Yeah, I mean, with CV as well, we saw him play that Elkwang last game as well, so he knows what he's going to be going against. He dealt very well with it with good Spirit Tempest overall from the late Bloomers. Now he's going to be on Isis, and now 5 a.m. at the moment, Nonton is hovering over Ul, which he suggested could be the Hunter pickup here. However, we will see a, you know, a difference in sort of builds from these two once again if he does go for this, because you'll probably see the Transcendence coming out just because of how mana intensive he really is. Ooh, Habwa, going to be an interesting pick. So... It could be Habwa jungle. I don't know if that's really Wolfie's cup of tea. Likely more uh, Habwa solo with Shock oh, in the jungle. Nemesis probably is going to be focusing those ultimates onto Shock, but Wolfie with that percent damage reduction and likely a shell on his team is going to I, not worry about that for at least part of the duration of the protection reduction. And then it's also going to be a Kronos pick for this. You do not see that one often. 
you don't see it often. The only one that you really see that on is Game Hunter, and even Game Hunter doesn't pull it out that often either. So seeing this one in a game like this, late bloomers have some tricks up the sleeves, it seems, coming into this one. But is it going to be Kronos versus Habois? And in that case, you know, how does that match up Gokra? I'm pretty sure I go definitely in favor of Habois. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends. Habois is very good against health reset characters such as Kronos, Kali, and Sun Wukong because the really the thing about Habwa, what makes him so strong is you knock up and then that's a duration where you can't Aegis. Beads doesn't do anything, though you can use them and you can't use your rewind or what have you and then he can burst you. So if Fusion plays it right, he could definitely take advantage of that and get a few kills onto Osmos in the laning phase or with the help of a gank. That said, it was a last pick Kronos and you have to think that they intentionally chose the Kronos into Hubwa matchup. Well, guys, these are your teams on paper. 5 a.m. versus Late Bloomers. 5 a.m. have a point to prove in this one, because if they lose this, they're going to be 0-2 during the round robin stages already. And Late Bloomers, on the other hand, if they can find a win here, they'll go 2-0, which will put them at the top of the group for the time being in terms of how these games have been played. We'll be right back once the game is underway and these guys have loaded it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to game three today. This is going to be 5 a.m. versus Late Bloomers. 5 a.m. 0-1 in terms of wins so far. Late Bloomers 1-0 up in terms of their plays today. And they're going to be facing each other off. And what have we got on the map? Well, Nonton's going to be playing all in the this hunter role. Wolfie's going to be in the jungle as Chuck. Mace in the face is going to play mid as Ao Kwong. Fusion's going to be in the solo lane as Hobwa. And finally, Elbro Chacho is going to be playing Athena support. And on the other side, we've got Late Bloomers. Yeah, late bloomers coming to this match after a tough fought win in the late game. Fazen on that hunter roll, Artemis. Fabi playing Geb in support. CV on your mid lane, legendary Isis in the jungle, Vinarun on Nemesis, and in the solo lane, Osmos on Kronos. The question is can they keep it rolling? Can they win another game in that later stage? Or are they going to have trouble against a uh, reinvigorated Five Anger Men? So rather than start this game, you can see Late Bloom as Fozin has gone for the, the Spike Gauntlet this time, so going to be rushing the Devourer's Gauntlet overall. Last game, we saw him go for the Heartseeker start here, crap, and I guess he's just as scared of Nonton's poke on this all, so going to be looking for the sustain early on. Meanwhile, though, Nonton going to be looking for that Transcendence more than likely. Yeah, it, it certainly could be Transcendence. Heartseeker is also very popular, but either way, it's probably double sacks because it just puts so much damage into the scaling of your 3-1 car uh, combo, the Halo Barrows and the Barbed Arrow. But it's going to be standard starts for everyone, and it looks like Wolfie and Fusion are going to be doing mid-camp to blue. So no red buff clear just yet. I, you know, another question to ask is how is Isis going to perform in the mid lane? We don't see her that often. She can be a bit of a lane bully, but she can also have some trouble depending on what happens and honestly how Mace the Face plays it. Yeah, well at the moment he's getting poked down quite a bit here. There's auto attacks raining down from CV. One thing to note in this lane as well, you can see he's going for a very quick buck of Toph at the moment is Mace to the Face. And if he takes too much poke here, correct, he's going to have to go back sooner rather than later. Otherwise he's going to drop a kill early on. You don't want to do that with an Isis. Yeah, you really don't. That said, let's take a take a look at the solo lane, which is very interesting. Is you get a Kronos who's quite good at uh, poke and clearing in this early stage of the game up against Chakabla, which is incredible at poke, yeah. incredible at clearing, and it's honestly kind of surprising me that Five Angry Men don't have an even stronger lead than they already have with the Water Spouts and the Thunder Strikes in this phase of the game. But at the moment, both sides full five angry men of the solo lane. Sorry, the left and right lane are going to push into tower. Meanwhile, mid, Mr. Face having a bit of trouble with Isis. Isis is a fantastic wave clear early on, paying dividends for her right now and trying to keep him pushed into tower, trying to make him lose a little bit of golden experience. And he's still 130 in, so we should see the junglers right about now start to rotate out and lane into the jungle. Yeah, definitely. But, the, you know... Alquan can lose some gold in this matchup because it's all about greed and hold on in oh, the duel lane. Fabi's gonna take a lot of damage, oh, very, Fabi. very low. Just one, one more hit. auto attack from Nonsense. Gonna, find it. gonna be able to block it, and in the end, Fabi will be able to survive. He does have two health potions available on his person, and that's 500 health worth of sustain over the next minute. He can stay. Yeah, he's got one on ticking right now. He's still got two available in the inventory, so he's just going to play very safe at the back for now. And he's still going to be able to hang around to protect Fusion with those shields if required if they try and go too aggressive. But now you can see Isis looking for a rotation here. CV coming all the way over. It looks like a call's been made because they realize she's not around right now. Back off immediately, do 5am, and that's a really good call from them not to stay so aggressive. 
that said, Ice is able to rotate because Mesa Face had to return to base. And, you know, a little bit early, you don't want yeah. to return at the point where you're not able to get back to mid camps. That said, he's Ooh, also picked up red. Sprint 2, not able to get red, too slow for that one. Ward and two mana pots. So this greedy rush into the Book of Thoth suddenly okay, isn't greedy anymore, which is really actually a huge loss. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna hurt him a little bit now because he's gonna take him a long time to get that book of tough gold online. Now that he's invested so much into uh, so the active of the sprint two and those wards as well, so he's gonna pay off. But mid lane camp's gonna spawn soon. Wolfie already in the area, and, and what you're gonna see from Chuck overall, Crate, is he's just gonna look to farm. Really, he's not the greatest of gankers realistically. It is really not, but when he shows up to a gank that's already underway and tries to turn the fight, you can definitely make something happen. Vinarune has just used his double dash. That's going to be on cooldown here. Brochacho dashes in, oh. finds the sneaky hog, will take a spirit ball, and Divine Judgment's going to come out. El Brochacho oh. and the Circle oh. Protection trying to alt out. Spears Tempest comes through. Going to find the They're nemesis, but that's going to be first blood. I don't think that was really worthwhile coming out from 5am and now Wolfie could be in a bit of trouble here though. He is Chuck, gonna use the Storm Call, get some nice damage off, but Fabi's rotating over here with the knockup just to delay anything else coming out of it. But 1-0 to late bloomers, and I'm okay if I was late bloomers with that. Oh, definitely. And, you know, it, first of all, while it was a cheeky play from Elbro Chacho, he used his dash to do it. There was no way out, and yeah. Mesa Face being on that slow Kwong build, it just wasn't a really good way to rotate over, so it was incredibly unsafe. And honestly, just Risky. to kind of... It sort of shows perhaps El uh I guess, like, newness to the role, right? He's not very familiar and didn't realize that that was guaranteed death. So we're four minutes in now. I mean, that, that did go, you know, did a bit of a deficit. But at the same time, if you check the experience right now, still in favor of 5 a.m. right now because they did get that one overall. So it does help him out a little bit. We'll have to see how this one plays out now because now he's gone back to base. He is level five. He did use his ultimate. No, his ultimate got canceled there. So he's still going to have that one online for the time being as well. And we'll see if that can pay off for them as Mace of the Face continues to try and farm up this middle lane. And the thing is, though, the kill went to CV as well, who's now finished the shoes of the Medjai. So now Mace is going to be very, very careful in this lane. If he gets hit by a Spirit Ball, it's going to really chunk. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Isis is a little bit similar to Fenrir in that if you don't have a way to interrupt that wing gust, you're just going to take a whole lot of damage at really any stage in the game, aside from level 1, where it's... Still relatively low, being like, I don't know, 120 or so damage, 130. But in the CB. middle lane, CB is getting very oh, aggressive. Gonna Mesa hurt. Face is going to feel that. Able to juke too, and that's good really job. good. The tornado turnaround doesn't connect. Wolfie's but coming. Wolfie's coming in. I don't know if he's going to find anything, though. They might look for it, because Mesa the Face is still going to have his ult available. Spirit Ball connects, though, and he hung around too much, baiting, and can Wolfie turn it around? That's the question. I don't think he can. Mesa the Face baited too long, got hit by the Spirit Ball, and that's all she wrote. Yeah, that is a big kill coming out from CV. It was essentially a solo kill. You could even really call it 1v2 or delayed 1v2. And now, Circle Protection is down, but they definitely have a shot at this Gold Fury. And it's really going to be on Nanton and Wolfie to turn around with the Storm Call and really good damage off of that uh, uh, combo. Athena coming in with the storm call as well. There's a big dunk and Fabi's gonna die. And now they can turn it around again as Nemesis looking for the aggression onto Wolfie trying to shred protections. But in the midst of that, the taunt comes out from Athena. It takes out Fozzy thanks to Nonton. Nonton with the leap available. He's gonna land the axe. That's the question. No, they're gonna disengage for now. Can they go for it afterwards? I don't think they can as the spirit come, ball comes out from CV. As Mace of the Face could get caught out as well now. Yeah, he's very, very slow, but his team should be here in time to protect him. They're not going to go for the turnaround gold tree. They're like, all right, we've <laughs> we've had enough risky gold trees for one day. But they were able to get two kills off of that one. It was a really nice turnaround and actually oh, put them in the lead. And this is going to be big. Talk. Into the tornado. Vinarune trying to roll away. Blink through the wall with the shield. But CB doesn't have a way out. Or maybe oh, does he does. He? He's oh, able does to he? do oh, does cataclysm. he? Oh, does he? Double kill, wing goes to the spray oh. tempest. He's going to walk into his CV. Wow, did you go into the dragon's mouth? What was the decision there? Fabi going to have to back away. But what a great play from CV to manage to get out and escape. Full support from his team, Kret, but he did pay the price with his life. And just look at the turnaround on the gold charts. First of all, two huge kills coming out at the gold fury, putting five hundred men up about 500, and then a turnaround kill where it's, uh, I believe it was Elbro Chacho taken down there, or was it Wolfie? Either way, 
it immediately turns back up. Or, or no, it was a double hill, kill, but it immediately turns back up as Nanton and Mesa Face rotate in. Bobby's and gotta be careful. Do amazing damage. Bobby. Oh, Crushing Wave connects and the Fiend all in him. Fabi stayed too long, but luckily Rollout's available. He was trying to contest the mid camps there, Kret, and nearly paid with his life as well. Yeah, Fusion actually didn't find the Water Spout there that he would have needed to interrupt the Rollout. Really unfortunate. They do get the mid camp, so it's not a complete loss. It's really more of a dropped kill than anything. Rob Kelfin now. Red buff being taken by Wolfie right now. That'll go over to Mace to the face, who's still having trouble in this mid lane. A level behind right now over CV, who did just drop down earlier on to him overall. But at the same time, Mace to the face is build right now. He has got issues with the Medjai online now. A little bit delayed because he went for that Book of Toth Rush, which hasn't really paid off for him right now. That said, the, the thing is, CV is super big right now. Level 11, 4, and 1. But can an Ices really carry a game depending, or at this level of play, depending on how well you play? And I think it's going to be tough. Uh, she just doesn't really have the positional tools to fight from range and is vulnerable to being focused down, despite that circle of protection. On the other hand, Nantan sending two levels over his opponent and substantially up in items, having a lot of heart seeker stacks, working yeah. on those Devourer's Gauntlets. Oh. He could be in a really good spot. Dom call connects onto Van Rune in the jungle. He's gonna get bursted down because Elbro Chacho is there to pick up the kill. And the speed buff. Actually, he did get secured by the Nemesis there, but not gonna allow him to survive for now. And that's all down to what you were just saying then as well. Nantan's fine in this lane, you know, he's got a two level lead. He can deal with both the support and the Hunter here. And now they're gonna look to pressure mid. Yeah, it's gonna be a taunt into Tornado. Spirit Temp is gonna be voided thanks to Beads. But good play on Elbro Chacho. Saw the Beads before the taunt came out and waited for the Beads to end. Taunt back into the Tornado. It's not what they wanted, but it is still pretty good. Well, Nantan did go for that Heartseeker start, going for the Devourer's Gauntlet's next, so the double stacking, not going for Transcendence, so has to be a little bit careful with his mana, and when he chooses to burst down with that Barbed Arrow combination he's got available to him. We're going to get the blue buff once again as Wolfie swings mid to soak up some experience. Yeah, Wolfie's just going to grab a little bit there, tag and run back to the jungle, and uh, looking to clear these camps, get a little bit more farm. We haven't talked much about Fusion in this solo lane, but he seems to be doing fairly well for himself. Has got actives just in case on those pen boots. Not necessarily controlling this lane, but maybe having a little bit more rotational pressure. Either way, both of these characters are looking to farm up, and they're just betting that they're going to be the ones who do better in the late game. And it that's really the big could issue. go either way. I mean, that's the big issue, isn't it? It's the bet about who's going to do the most as this game goes on, because Kronos late game is a Amazing as is Hubwar. One crushing wave could just end an entire team in a second, as we've seen from Ale Quote Ultimates time and time again. Mid comes spawn, left hand side, and 5 a.m. take those runs away nice and quick before Fabi can even get there. Right one's due to spawn soon, but CV gets caught out in mid by a squall. Yeah, but now it's gonna turn around. Storm call comes through, divine judgment, and the spirit oh! tempest is going to just barely miss, but Athena arrives. CV living by the skin of a shield. And now Venerun is going to try and stay alive here. But no, it's going to be Fabi taken down by the auto tech Robo Chacho. Double dash to get away. Squall will not be face to face in an awkward spot. But Gold Fury is absolutely free. Um, right inside, you're going to see Fusion pick up that mid camp. As we go into a quick pause from CV here, as Fabi did disconnect at the end there by the looks of it. So now we're going to see the Gold Fury being attempted. But it gives us a little bit of time just to talk about how the stages of this game went, Cret. You know, from the beginning outset, it looked like late bloomers were in a pretty good position considering Isis did get ahead. But right now, she's died two times pretty quickly overall, honestly. Picked up in middle lane there, and that's going to, you know, give a Gold Fury over to 5 a.m. And like you said, can she carry from this position? I guess they might be looking to, you know, wards this Chrono. So this game goes on yeah i mean what it what it comes down to with isis is you don't really have any great options to reposition because your movement speed buff on the wing gust is so interruptible so is it a combat blink or is it more of a hold your ground style of isis and really just hoping praying and itemizing towards that circle of protection the other thing i want to touch on is just the way that the difference in these teams to uh, these two teams have manifested it is a uh, 2000 gold or gold lead for five hundred men they're going to pick up this gold fury we assume which is going to add another 1500 and putting them at 3500 gold that's all well and good but they have been creating an experience lead for the last 5 minutes consistently and are now setting up 5348 experience I can't really chalk that up to kills. I have to say it's all about farm, being yeah, in the right, right place at the right time, time, and efficient sharing between the different players. It also does, it's important to know that Wolfie is uh, 
not using a Bumba's Mask here. He's using a Death Toll, which I really like on Shock. I mean, it does provide extra damage, especially with the axe as well, you know, just to be able to clear the waves a little bit quicker. Um, if he get behind in the jungle, though, it could have caused him an issue, but it, it plays better to chalk strengths, you know, overall, than to go for the Bumba's Mask. I mean, he's technically a warrior that is a front line, so that death toll will help him out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I overall, I really love the pickup. The question is, where's Wolfie going to go with this build? And it looks like right now he's got a mace. So probably building into Jodens and going a more caster style. Although you could see, uh, you could see a Titan's main probably a little bit early for that. But it is very, very good in structures if that's what Five Ringmen choose to do. They do get the Gold Fury nice and easy. And now it's really, Nanton is in a great position. Two levels over his Artemis. And up about 1200 gold yeah i mean one thing to know is like this experience the lead that you see crap look at the difference oh in the middle lane, though, middle middle lane. big tornado as well big play from athena coming out there just setting that one up they're gonna get mid tower as well that's even bigger and one thing to know crap that i was gonna say is like the big difference is in terms of supports i mean athena level 11 fabi on that gab only level eight and he's not he's only just got sovereignty online doesn't even have hog three yet and that's one of the reasons why you know you're going to see him not, he's not going to be able to pick it up just yet. He won't do it because he knows he lost the Gold Fury. So that's why he's caught up in terms of, you know, yeah. getting that towards that sovereignty with that Iron Mail pickup. Well, left on the left side, hand though, side, Nanton is in a lot of trouble. We'll be able to jump. jump over the Spirit Ball. Can he get the axe he needs or is he just going to run for his life? And it looks like he's just going to back away. I do want to touch on Hobois versus Nemesis as a matchup. It's actually very much in Hobois' favor because your knockup removes Retribution Shield and applies the damage before the shield, which is really strong. And you can't shield when you're in the air, so knock up into water cannon or ultimate is just guaranteed for Hubla. Nemesis, well, Nemesis will take that damage. I have to watch yourself as we go on further into this game, so keep your eyes on that, guys, just to see if that does happen. So you'll know if you see her do it, and you're like, why didn't she shield there? Well, it's probably because she shouldn't have. She couldn't have, sorry. And now she's dead because a crushing wave hit her in the face. We'll see as this one goes on, though, as Kronos... Keeping the pressure on this lane, though, over and over again, keeping Hobois forced back to base. It looks like this tower's going to go down sooner rather than later in this right-hand side. Not this wave, though, probably in the next one. It's still not a huge deal for Fusion. He's able to get his farm just fine, and pushing up without a tower, I, I think he's warding, positioning appropriately, and communicating mm -hmm. with his team well. He hasn't been even close to getting ganked so far this That's game, true. and while the tower opens him up, I, I don't think it really changed that. And Nemesis really is very far behind as well, down three levels versus her opposition, not having those chin size online, forced into beads as opposed to sprints, so no good way to really stick on the targets as well as she might like to. And five very men just have all of the tools they need. They're up 4,000 4, gold, and now they just need to make their transitions properly and make the choice of when do we stop collecting gold across the map and start looking for actual towers and more control. Well, one thing to note as well, going back to Hubwa on that fusion, he's given up a lot of his tower because he's been picking up these mid camps on the right side over and over again most of the time. However, talking about that mid camp on the right, left ones did go to 5 a.m. But right now, Mesa the face trying to contest these ones on this right hand side. Still working on that book of Toph for the most part, but he's already got he's got rank two of it now, so that soul trap is online. He's going to delay them as Athena will come in onto fusion. They're looking to try and follow this one up. They're not going to find anything for now, but that gives them the zoning potential to pick up the mid camps as mid lane Chuck deals with. Fabi. Yeah, the other thing to mention, Kronos forced to recall there, but a huge Spirit Ball from CV is going to find Poke on a Mace and Fusion, and that essentially means that while it won't get any kills for late bloomers, it completely stops any aggression. Although Wolfie in the middle lane will be aggressed on, I don't think he's going to be in too much trouble. Nah, he'll be okay for now, just back away, especially with a theme there, but big taunt coming out from him. Fabi's very low level, so he takes a lot of damage from that. He's going to survive for the most part because of the circle of protection coming out from Isis there, and now maybe we have a delayed fight because on the backside we've got Hobois using the wet paper to try and close the distance, but rollout immediately used by Geb. But Nonton's here on that. Oh, they're looking for CV. The top was big. Spirit Tempest doesn't connect because the beads was used. A good shield as well. The dunk down on the storm cold doesn't find CV. He's still alive, but at the same time, Nemesis is running for his life and he's not going to get away. Neither is Fabi. Actually, no, he is going to get away, but Fabi dies, and that could possibly be a fire giant. No, it doesn't look like they're going to go for it. I thought they might consider it. Yeah, yeah I mean, they, they could have considered it. It would have been a little ri risky, and I, I feel like they just aren't going to do that. They're not going to make risky plays. They don't need to. Just end it outright. And in the 
what they're going to do with this play is they're just going to look for the tower. But the biggest thing, I think, in that situation overall was when Wolfie Tempest backed in, didn't use anything, and got a circle of protection. Now CV's in a lot of trouble. Can Nanson find the burst combo? No, he's going to be turned on with Divine Judgment. Fazen coming in. Kronos is rotating. Infusion's not even to get there. The, or the Defender of Olympus oh, onto two. Mace of the face. Needs to find a way to protect the team. It's going to be huge. And this is going to be three. Cleaned up. Nice and easy. Gold Fury is spawning very soon as well. Osmos did such an amazing play there with that time warp. They're just freezing them all in place, picking up. Gold Fury online, as you said, it's not even flashing just yet, but they know Wolfie and Fusion are going to be in the area. They've got a ward available. The rollout's been popped by Fabi. He's trying to chase onto this. Can he find somebody? That's the question. He has to use the shield to prevent some of that damage there. A lot coming out from Fusion overall. And now you can see Wolfie just re-engage and putting the pressure back on again. But now Gold Fury's up. Have they got the muster to try and defend this here, Kret? Uh... Mm, good slow. Circle protection is down. That's really, really good. But I think it's just knock up into alt. We'll see oh! it. And there it is. The double ultimate. Fabi taken down. And that is a double kill for Fusion. This is looking really big as far as it's going to fall. But oh, a beautiful spare ball. 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 Fusion in the ages. Forced out as well, but he's still going to go down. The silence was big on Wolfie to delay him. He jumps back to his axe, though. And now he's running double sprint pop. But Fozzy going to chase him down for the double kill. Go Fury, did that go to late? late it to went to five ultimate? angry men. They it were able to, to get it Are you with serious? the ultimates. They got wow. it with the ultimates. Yeah. I mean, wow, right? That was... I, I don't, was it, it worth it, though? Was it? I mean, I guess it yeah. was, considering they lost three kills, and then we got the Go Fury, but then they lost their lives oh, also, as well. Also, CV, <gasps> Ooh, totally CV. dead. So, that's what happens when you get to a later stage of Athena, in that you can taunt into shield wall. And yeah. if there's no diminishing returns on the target, they will stand in your shield wall. CV didn't have beads, they were already used. No second active. And that shield wall, the base damage, absolutely incredible. That said, Obro not able to really invade the red buff now. He might he might go for it, but it would be really, really risky. And it's right, just like instead gonna rotate over the left hand side. Ball, ball yeah. was used last fight, so I don't think he's back up. Yeah, yeah, it is, though, but now they're going to go aggressive. They're going to force out the beads, at least. And now big shield coming out from Fabi, but the tower falls, so they get something else off the back of that goal fury that they just technically stole away from the late bloomers there. And now late bloomers must be licking their wounds a little bit, because after the start, they have oh, three tempers. Steals the buff bow. as well. Mace to the face. Nice play there. Yeah, and you know, I like that play right now because CV is so huge, and honestly, Osmos is too, so red buff's going to be a big deal on either of them, granting about 40 magical power. And for Mace of the Face, it's, it's going to be roughly the same, but Fabi's going to blink in. Beads used for Mace. Elbert Chacho could be turned on here. Nice squall, and a tornado to zone them out. Great play. Taunt back and tornado. Reset on Fabi, and that will be enough gold, or enough damage to kill. Storm call used, not going to do too much to Venerable. Oh, it looks like they want to keep going. Heavenly Agility as well. And this Run is going to be a dive, not going to find the kills. Not going to find the kills. Now Fusion is here. They'll be while he was just busy off farming his jungle for the most part. He turns up late, but nothing's coming out. A quick pause once again coming out from CV there. So a bit of delay in action, Craig. This one's gone crazy all of a sudden. Like that that whole yeah. engagement around the middle when Kronos came over, got a three-man warp that just forced them all to die. And then great turnaround from 5 a.m. Yeah, I mean that that time warp was, or time stop was absolutely amazing and got a lot of kills. The gold fury, unfortunately for late bloomers, spawned just a few seconds too late for them to do it safely. They knew they were going to be up against the hubwa chalk, chalk double ultimate. They saw it coming. They dropped the circle of protection. They didn't have a shell. And I mean, you knew I was going to say this at some point in the game. It might have made the difference because mm -hmm. for sure. They did not live through that ultimate combo. They knew it was going to happen, and they thought they might have a chance at it, but it was just too much damage. Absolutely crazy. I mean, so right now it's 14 to 9 during this pause. Golf Fury is down. Gold lead just under 6,000 for 5 a.m. Experience lead is over 11,000 right now as well. So 5 a.m. on paper looking fantastic in this game so far. Mace to the face, probably a little bit behind where we would have preferred to. But Book of Toth is online now. Has got Heavenly Agility built in with that um, Purification Beads at max rank as well. So got very defensive for the most part. But he's doing some good plays for his team. Meanwhile, this Chuck Jungle done by Wolf. He's really worked out 1, 2, and 10 right now, crap. Yeah, and Shock Jungle was definitely a little bit more supportive than some of the other options yeah. that Wolfie plays. Especially with the Jodens. I mean, he's really looking for more control, more slowing, more poking, and it's less about sticking to targets and just boxing them out. There's also no one Wolfie really wants to box in this comp, right? Like, 
Yeah. They exactly. all would just kind of do a good job of dealing with him, except for maybe the Isis who could fight him with uh, crowd control, but that's going to be left tower taken down, and that's what firing your mins going to be all about as they transition into the late game a little bit earlier than expected. Uh, usually, you know, about the 20-minute mark, and they're doing it at 19. It's all about taking towers, getting map control, and then looking for objectives, the big plays. Objectives, objectives, Time and time again. And now with that left-hand side tier 2 tower being down, Cred, that exposes the Phoenix, the furthest Phoenix away from the Fire Giant as well. So if they can actually just allow the split push option, they can bait a Fire Giant if they wish to. They have Nonton split push that. Or someone else like, you know, like the little sort of Chak or something like that just to rotate over afterwards. It's all going to be possible for them. But you can see that from 5am's game plan right now. They pick, get in a pick, and then they take an objective. Get in a pick, take an objective. Time and time again. Again, and now they're starting to siege the fire giant. Yeah, they're definitely in the area. The question is, what are they going to do? And it looks like it's going to be a four, no, th one, one, three. Three members on the right hand side Fusion, Wolfie, and oh, Athena. In trouble. They really want this Kronos. And with that taunt, it could certainly be a kill. Nice use of beads on half health. Will rewind. Tower is on Wolfie. He can tank this for Wolfie a while. Days. And now, oh, that whole ball oh, is not going to connect. Osmos gets that's away. And now Nemesis is coming back. He's a lot of trouble. Minarune, can he get this? I don't think he can continue the chase. The catch is in mother. Taunt comes out from Athena. Are they going to turn this one around with a full combo? He does fusion. One, two, three ultimates does fusion. Have with that hob wobble. He only needs to use two of them. And now Athena's cut out of position. A big go across though. Only finds two, but Osmos very low. Doesn't have the rewind available. And now Wolfie eats an ultimate from Cataclysm. Meanwhile though, look what Nonton's doing here, Krat. Split pushing away. Yeah, split pushing very, very hard, and he's actually going to take a Phoenix here. No one's gonna, gonna be gonna... able to recall really? in time. Oh yeah, that double Oops. stack build doing so oh, yeah. much really damage. Is junk. So much yeah, it's junk. absolutely incredible. And uh, he get he's out? just gonna run. Yeah, he doesn't want to fight this, but with sprint and with the movement speed boost from the axes, I think this is going to be an easy escape for Nanton, especially when he can jump over walls and his opponents cannot. Oh, well, the Reign of Arrows misses as well, suppresses so the Nanton turns oh, around, this is a mistake, mistake is made, silent, forces the beads, speeds himself up, jumps away, but that force beads for absolutely nothing Wait, realistically. Wait, three on the but left, look what you he's know doing. what that means. Yeah, look what he's doing, he's keeping him busy because Fire Giant's under threat right now. And only Nemesis in the area, Kronos closing in, Fabi trying to turn up, can they get him in time? I don't think they can. Yeah, it's going to be very close, but Fabi used his blink, and now it's just a clean disengage from five angry men. They don't want to fight this. They don't need to fight this. They can group up, make sure they're all ready, and then go in. They also might want to wait for Nanton's rage timing coming out rather soon. Uh, in fact, when he recalls, he will have that rage. We'll see what five angry men elect to do, but they're not going to go for a phoenix unless it's easy without that rage on their hunter. Well, Nonton going to start bringing down this tier 1 tower in a matter of moments right now. Phoenix down in middle lane. Left down one still available, but one tier 2 tower left on the map. I don't think late bloomers should try and defend this too hard. Because the rest of 5am are going to group up with Nonton right now to make sure this one goes down. Wolfie going to tank it up a storm. Haha, <laughs> hear my puns. As we take down the last tier 2 on the map for late bloomers. And now, you know, can Kronos really make this happen? Because I think it is kind of up to him to turn this late game. He's one of the stronger late game carries, unless CV can land a perfect Ice Assault. But they're just, it's not the right time for late bloomers. They don't have Bancroft's finish on Kronos. They don't have Jodens, or it could be Kronos finished on, uh, no, it's going to be uh, Tahuti finished on Isis. And so they don't want to fight right now, but they're being forced oh, into it. Engage. Right That's going to be a big taunt. But Circle Protection comes out, and El Bertaccio is going to be turned off. Oh! He goes in. Beautiful Spirit Tempest. Once again, Storm Disgusting. Call. And now it's just Fawzin staying alive. Osmos trying to run for the base, but the Hail of Arrows will be enough to find the kill onto Artemis. And now, with one Phoenix down, they can take the game. Five Angry Men were furious after their first defeat. They're not going to let it happen again. They don't let it happen again. They really are angry men after this game and how that one played out. They've won one and lost one so far, as have late bloomers. They've also won one and lost one. And we're going to go into the next game as well shortly. And what you're going to see of that one and the next game is going to be the other two teams of Fat Chunks Assemble versus Torch. But a great game by these two teams there, correct? Great game, but overall 5 a.m. came out on top. Yeah, but we're going to jump into a quick replay of that last fight. Remember, so under good. the Phoenix, great dash in from Elbow Chacho attempt to turn 
with that circle of protection. Yeah, watch Let's this on your screen. See what I mean, happens. You'll see a knockup come out from Hebo, and as soon as that knockup goes off with the spout, immediately Athena goes in, lands a great taunt. If you watch the timing of the circle of protection here, Mesa the face slows down his ultimate, waits a little bit longer with that spirit tempest as they all try and group for the heal, and then gets hit by so much damage. Ridiculous. Really well played by 5 a.m. Yeah, beautiful job playing around that Isis. Very strong character. Circle prote protection can turn so much, but they played around it just fine. And we're going to be back in just a few minutes, guys, to continue our wonderful day of smite action. Next match will be the Chunks versus Torch.